Hello, this is Wendy Chisholm, and this is a video on how for Windows 7 operating systems to use PuTTY and to connect with sdf.org's Unix server and to deal with uh, text editor, our text editor, our textbook chapter lessons too, and to understand why there's some differences. I've downloaded PuTTY from putty.org and this is what the file looks like. It's on my desktop and I'm going to double click that. I get this uh, security warning here. Take a look at that. It's okay to run this. It really is. Uh, in here in the host name we're going to type in sdf.org. It's pretty much all you got to do. The window opens. Looks something like this. Okay, so I'm going to log in. Hopefully you've already made an account, and if you haven't, please see my other video on how to create an account with sdf.org as a Windows 7 user. So I'm going to type in. Okay. It says here I'm going to expire to validate. To validate your account means that you have more access to a lot of other privileges. Uh, our textbook and sdf.org weren't collaborating so some of the things that you read in our textbook may not be available to you or available to a non-validated user. To validate to validate your account uh, it costs three dollars. Okay I'm gonna hit my backspace key. The information we're reading here is uh, basically about servers at the SDF uh, site and how long they've been up, hours they've been, how many users are on them, the loads, meaning the capacity towards their memory and stuff. People need to know about that for web servers and video games. This is sort of a welcome message that you'll see change every once in a while. And this is a guest book, people who've signed the guest book and are new to um, SDF. Please take note here of this information, typing help, com, T-T-Y-T-T-E-R, to do a tweeter, tweets, anonymously. Play around with them. Just go ahead and type in right here at the command prompt. And then if you want to be a lifetime member, $36 is uh, what it costs. Here's our command prompt right here. And I'm going to go ahead and type in Pico. Uh, use the command edit and make a file name. Here I'll make um, test file example pico.txt. TXT is the file extension or file type. Hit enter and we are now at the uh, pico prompt. Take a look up here. Okay. That's a uh, cursor to start typing. We can type anything we want right there. And then down here is our menu. See that down here? Um, the the uh, carrot key, the carrot key is the control key on your keyboard. Okay, so um, down below is to get help right out here. This is how to save a file. Uh, control O will save a file. And uh, Control X will exit you out of Pico and get you back to the command prompt. Go ahead and get through the textbook and read through the rest of these. Um, people use text editors in Unix actually to, to write programs so you'll see in our textbook if you go if you follow through on lessons through to hello to write the JavaScript it will actually um, should work on here so I'm going to go ahead and hit control O to uh, save the file and watch down here watch down here below a new menu is going to pop up and it'll let you know that you saved it so control O so wrote one line and now I'm going to hit Control X to get out. Let's go ahead and run the v, VI editor, VI, and, and you'll see it's the same command, edit file. So type in edit and give this file something new. We'll do test example vi.txt, a text file type. Enter. And you'll see, because I'm a non validated user, uh, SDF has uh, defaulted the VI editor to Pico, and you're going to have to do that. So take a look in the textbook. Ta Oops, sorry about that. Take a look in the textbook, and uh, you'll see the differences in VI. Basically, the um, differences between um, 
VI editor and Pico is that Pico is the easier uh, editor to use because of the menu down here whereas VI doesn't really have a menu you have to memorize them and I think on page 57 or 59 of our textbook you'll see all the commands that you can use for VI it gives you a lot more options it gives you more flexibility but it's a little more complicated to use uh, if you become a valid, uh, validated user with SDF.org, you should be able to use the VI editor. I'm going to uh, get out of here, Control X, and I'm now back at the command prompt. And now let's talk about uh, Emacs. Uh, e M A C S is the um, command there, and it's the same thing. We're going to do go ahead and do a edit uh, e uh, test example dot um, emac dot txt there we go hit enter and again there we are again back at the pico valid become a validated member and you will be able to run an emac and a gui gui graphic user interface um, program through emac Let's get out of here, control X, and let's do the other command, Emacs. Oops. Let's see here. And you'll see that's not even going to be validated for a non, they're not even, um, sdf.org is not even going to allow you to use that. The whole point of the lesson is to learn how to open up a text editor, to create a file, to play around in the program, and then to close out, and then to retrieve it. Please see other videos for how to retrieve files and for other lessons. Thank you. This is Wendy Chisholm, and have a great day.